Belly dancing, hot boys and beauty pageants are three of the most unlikely things that come to mind when you think of the war in Syria. <laughs> ISIS is everywhere. <laughs> I don't want innocent people to die because of the competition. <laughs> the film Mr Gay Syria tells one of the most overlooked stories born out of the Syrian conflict. Director Aisha Toprak spent the past two years following LGBTQI Syrian refugees, putting their lives on the line every day in search of freedom. Some of them find sort of under the table jobs that I don't know, drug trafficking or sex working. So it's a lot of dodgy things that they have to do in order to survive. They're probably the only people that nobody wants because of the regime, but they're also not wanted uh, from the opposition either. Aisa, welcome to Australia. It's lovely to have Thank you here. Thank you so much. Despite the film's name, it's not really about a beauty pageant, is it? It really isn't. It uses the beauty pageant as a way of showing one man's coming out story in a very conservative Arab and Turkish setting. There's a love story in the film. Um, it's, it's about migration at the same time and, and also difficulties of surviving as a, as, a, as a refugee in Turkey. Mr. Gay Syria is contestant number four. You're in a really strange predicament. You've made this incredible documentary, but you can't show Hussein in the promotion of the film, yes. which I'm really confused about. I am indeed in a very strange position. We can't promote the film online or on TV because Hussein is still in Istanbul. Um, and until he gets out of Istanbul, we're trying to be very careful about his security. So you guys are kind of the exception. This is the first time that we're allowing a feature to be made about Mr. Gay Syria, but you have to find creative ways of what you can show and what you can't show. <laughs> The same story is the centerpiece of the doco. He's closeted, Muslim, has a wife and a daughter. He only agreed to be in the film on the condition it's only shown in cinemas outside of Turkey and the Arab world, which is why we can't show you his face here. Although he escapes war-torn Syria, he still feels his life in Turkey is under siege. <laughs> بس الخوف كان أكبر لو أهلي يعرفوا إنه إنه أنا مستر جي سيريا. Hussein wins the title of Mr. Gay Syria in Istanbul, which qualifies him for the Mr. Gay World Comp abroad. He thinks it's his ticket to freedom for good, but he doesn't get the visa to go. ليش أنا رحت على مستر جي سيريا؟ المصلحة الشخصية مش عن أطلع من هذا البلد هذا البلد وأسحب بنتي. ما بدي بنتي تعيش بهيك عقلية. Every year, men from right across the globe compete to be crowned Mr. Gay World. But being Syrian, despite living abroad as a refugee, entering this competition still means putting your life at risk. The videos Mahmoud is referring to are clips of gay Syrian men being thrown off buildings, purportedly by ISIS militants. The Syrian government also deems homosexuality a crime, punishable at the very least by imprisonment. Why Mr. Gay World though? Mahmoud, he's a big LGBTI activist in the Arab world. And after he came to Turkey, um, we met and he said, you know, I've got this big dream and that is to take the first Arab man to an international beauty contest called Mr. Gay World. And he saw this as a defiance, basically, of everything that he's lived through. This was the only thing he knew of to make enough noise um, to get the media's attention. <laughs> There's around 1,900 LGBTQI refugees in Turkey right now. Although being gay there is not outlawed, there are consistent reports of harassment and abuse in what's largely a conservative Muslim society. In 2017, authorities banned Istanbul Pride for the third year in a row. And in the past eight years, at least 41 trans or gender diverse people were killed in Turkey. I mean, there are scenes in the film where the authorities are throwing smoke bombs, they're, they're firing bullets even at a gay pride march. Yeah. That must have freaked you out. Well, yeah, I mean, it happens in Turkey. There's so many moments where we do get gas bombs, so 
we're perhaps a little bit more used to it. Their daily life becomes so much a big part of your life. You start worrying about what's going to happen to them. And there were many times that I came home and I'm like, how the fuck am I? Whoops. <laughs> I see that's Turkish self-censorship for you. What do you mean by that? Turkish self-censorship? They wouldn't want to say fuck on TV, so... We say fuck all the time in our okay, show. Okay, all right, fine. Get all it all right. out. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> on Eddie, man. <laughs> do you feel that there is hope for a lot of these young Syrian gay men? I do feel that there's hope for, for their lives. People create their own hope. But hope in terms of how long it's going to take, what they want, I don't know. Because it also depends on governments and it also depends, it depends on Turkey, it depends on Europe. If you're saying it's still in Istanbul, for example, he's been waiting for asylum for the last three, four years and still nothing has happened. In terms of them, perhaps that hope isn't as big as the way I see it. <laughs> طلع على بكرة ولا طلع على بعد خلاص